Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here, second one take video news reaction um, video of the day for Tuesday the 21st of March 2023. Happy spring and happy five days till Doctor Who series one turns 18. It will be an adult. Anyway, that's uh, the birthday cake design I had planned for my, uh, I drew for my 18th birthday in 2017. I've got a couple of them from my 17th to last year's, um, which was 23, with the exception of 22, because that was a surprise one. But uh, apart from that one, I designed, I designed all of my cakes from 17 to 23. I'd have to come up with one for 24. I've got an idea. I've got an idea what I want for number 24 uh, later this year. So anyway, unless it's going to be another surprise one. Anyway, so that's not the point. I might show you these pictures at the end, but um, at the... Um, but um, anyway, um, so this video is mainly about the uh, Doctor Who Red Nose Day um, things that they did. Um, as we got teased as that David Tennant would be doing something for Red Nose Day 2023 in costume as the 14th Doctor. So we were wondering what's it going to be. Is it going to be a little scared? Is it going to be a new minisode? Is David Tennant just going to be hosting the event in his costume? Uh, apparently he hosted it in a normal suit. But uh, what they did do at the very start, so I told, I didn't see it live, but I was um, apparently well, I did watch Farry's video on it, uh, not not the actual live stream when it was actually airing, but I watched it the next day. Um, hi, by the way, Farry's, how are you doing, mate? Um, but anyway, I watched that and I watched the clips on their own, and yeah, so basically, the sketch is. Pretty much Lenny Henry not feeling very well just before he goes out to start hosting the evening. And then he suddenly regenerates into David Tennant. Like with the actual regeneration from Jodie Whittaker into David Tennant in The Power of the Doctor. The costume changes as well, so the clothes change. Which is exclusive to the regeneration into the 14th Doctor. All the other Doctors have kept their predecessors' clothes. In fact, I'm dead certain Patrick Troughton's second Doctor... Not only keeps the First Doctor's costume when he regenerates, but I think he incorporates some of it into his own look as well. So they kind of share clothes or a similar cost, uh, similar clothes for at least the power of the Daleks. Um, maybe the Second Doctor puts his own spin on it later on, but certainly I think they do. The Second Doctor does inherit some of the First Doctor's clothing in at least his first story, and then from John Pertwee onwards, they all get their own distinct costumes. But they are usually seen having wearing their predecessors' clothes, either at the very beginning of the post-regeneration story or at the end of the regeneration story, or both in the cases where it's both. So Spearhead from Space has Pertwee at the start of that. Uh, Palantir Spiders Logopolis has Tom Baker wear Pertwee's Logopolis into uh, Cast Revolver, and Case of Androzani to Twin Dilemma. Then Tam Narani, of course, is that... Um, because they got rid of Colin Baker before they made season 24, they got um, Sebastian McCoy to dress up as the seventh Doctor in a wig. So technically, Colin Baker doesn't wear that in that his regeneration scene, but Time in the Running has Sylvester McCoy wear both costumes. TV movie, Paul McGann doesn't get the opportunity to wear the seventh Doctor's costume because he's had his clothes removed because he's in the morgue. But he does, but John Hurt does wear the eighth Doctor's costume. And again, I think some of that does get incorporated into his new costume. We don't see the full-on regeneration into Christopher Eccleston, but we do see Eccleston regenerate into Tennant. Tennant keeps Eccleston's clothes. Um, Tennant into himself regeneration stays in the same clothes anyway. And then Smith from Tennant, Capaldi from Smith, and Jodie Whittaker from Peter Capaldi. So they keep their predecessors' clothes. That's the times we've seen it in the regeneration and post-regeneration episodes, plus Spearhead and Time in the Rani and uh yeah just and those two for the post-regeneration stories as well time they're on is kind of a bit of both really um but in terms of, and like i said power um 10th planet into power as well so um so i've got the 10th planet but yeah power of the doctor is the first one where it actually changes with doctor which will hopefully be explained in the store uh, uh in universe, how hopefully that will get explained in the story. Of course, Rusty Davis 
did that so that there wouldn't be any stupid people on the internet or in the press going, ooh, David Trent's in drag or whatnot because he's wearing women's clothing. That's why he did that on a, on a production side. But hopefully there'll be an in-universe reasoning. Yes, it would have been great to see David Tennant wearing Jodie Whittaker's costume, at least for that scene. But I can see why Rusty did that. Or oh, Rusty Davis did that on a production side because he didn't want people to get all silly about it. It half worked. It half worked. Uh, other people being silly about it. Well, maybe not silly, but other people have been like, ah. Uh, and to be fair, I can't blame them. But oh well. So long as that there isn't any very silly people going, "Ooh, David Tennant's in drag." Then okay, I, I see why Russell did that. Uh, Russell T. Davis did that. But hopefully, we will see um, David Tennant's Doctor's costume, the total change of the costume being revealed in universe in the in the story, and then when he regenerates into Shooty, by the looks of it, it looks like Shooty is going to wear what's the, the 14th Doctor's costume. And hopefully the next female Doctor can regenerate, who then regenerates into a male Doctor afterwards, will then be able to have, the male Doctor will then be able to wear their clothing. Hey, it's fine. It's, it worked for a female Doctor to wear a male Doctor's costume. Look at Jodie in Twice Upon a Time and The Woman Who Fell to Earth. My guess is the 16th Doctor probably would be female if Russell sticks around, but she decides to go, but Russell is sticking around. My guess is Russell would and maybe have another go at casting a female doctor, as he says he <laughs> wanted to do in a news article on my cupboard. But then Shooty just wowed them for um, for this time round. Hopefully he's going to be great then. But anyway, so I've been rambling for nearly seven minutes and I haven't gotten to the point. Okay, so the Red Nose, um, so I did describe the Red Nose Day scene. Um, but yeah, it was a funny sketch, fun, enjoyable. I loved the fact they played um 13 the 13th doctor's theme during the regeneration and then just like in the actual episode the power of the doctor and then the 13th doctor's theme tune that was used from the woman who fell to earth to the power of the doctor the version of the theme tune for her episodes was well actually well the ghost monument but it was heard in the woman who fell to earth but it, even though the title was in play but basically the 2018 version of the doctor who theme was played one last final time in a Doctor Who Minnesota sketch before we have the new thing coming up later in the year. I'd say one last final time, maybe it'll be played in some of the other stuff later down the line, like Doomsday or Redacted 2, if that comes out later this year or something. Plus, also, whenever Big Finish get around to doing 13th Doctor stuff. Um, but in terms of the visual content, other than possible Doomsday stuff, this is probably going to be the last time we're going to have a visual story featuring the 13th Doctor theme before we have the brand new theme later this year for the 14th and 15th Doctors. Probably won't be much of a change for the 15th Doctors for series 14, maybe for series 15 or 16, depending on how long she is staying. Anyway, but yeah, this is a fun little sketch. There wasn't really that much, but it was basically to introduce Lenny Henry and David Tennant. It was a bit of fun. Not much to, not much to say on other than it was quite fun. The BBC upload version, I believe, did have a different set of music for that scene, which I was a bit disappointed about. But the scene, they, the version they did actually play on broadcast and what the Children Need channel have uploaded is, um, as well as some other people, has got the music, the, the actual music from the show, so 13 and the 2018 version of the theme. So that's great. And also David Tennant was that was brilliant during the whole what, what, what thing again, and then realising he had to go and do host Red Nose Day. I was like, ah, and then runs out. And apparently the announcer then said, tells out all the names of the hosts, and they say, and Lenny Henry, your host Lenny Henry, and David Tennant runs out. That's funny. Also, in another universe, this then means that Lenny Henry's sketch doctor from, I believe it's the Lenny Henry show, is then regenerates into another version of the David Tennant 14th Doctor. Although on the Lenny Henry show, he's apparently the 8th Doctor. I thought that sketch came out in 1985 or 86. Wouldn't that make him the 7th Doctor? Mm, maybe if it was 1987, then perhaps. But I thought the companion was supposed to be Perry, so... I'm going to have to get back on that year. But I thought it was 1985 or 86 that sketch came out, meaning that he would have been Colin Baker prior. And then shouldn't he be the 7th Doctor? But apparently David Tent's now the 9.5 Doctor, um, meaning that... like. Lenny Henry is supposed to be the eighth Doctor in this chronology. I don't know. I thought he, I thought he was the seventh Doctor in 
the Lenny Henry sketch show continuity. Maybe if they, maybe if he's regenerated from Jim Broken from the Victoria Woods sketch series, and he was the seventh Doctor, following on from Colin Sixth, then that would make sense if the two, two universes were joined together. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, I suppose in the Lenny Henry show Doctor Who universe, David Tennant is the next Doctor, I guess. Hmm. That or Daniel Barton is somehow secretly a Time Lord. And he's somehow re regenerated into the 14th Doctor. Hmm. Oh well, it was quite a fun sketch. We also had a Dalek partake in the Eurovision Song Contest um, auditions, um, singing a, a rendition of Work It, Make It Faster, Stronger. What's that such song actually called? It's um, But the lyrics like, Work It, Make It, turn along those lines. I can't remember every single lyric, but it's a fun song. Though a fan edit of Sweetie Belle from My Little Pony, Friendship of Magic does make her sing it better than the Dalek, I do have to admit. So, yeah, I, I say Sweetie Belle sung it better. Besides the original singer, after the original singer, Sweetie Belle sings it, sing, it sings it better than the Dalek. But the Dalek actually does a surprisingly good job at it. So, yeah, I wasn't expecting the Dalek to do that great of a job singing, but considering the song, it does a really good job with it. Um, Daleks aren't known for singing, after all. <laughs> Unless it's a drunk Dilbert the Dalek from Aimless Wanderings. But even then, it's mostly through Pastel who gets drunk, so... Yeah, go listen to Aimless Wanderings, they're, they're funny. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's basically it. we got um, Lenny Henry regenerates into David Tennant. Basically, having the Lenny Henry a doctor from his sketch show from the 80s now has regenerated into a doctor very similar to the 14th doctor as played by david tennant who is technically the third incarnation to be played by david tennant the second one that was the second body but the third incarnation because of the whole 10th doctor regenerating into himself thing so he's technically same incarnation different but second okay so same so same incarnation but he's on He's had two lives, so it's the 11th and 12th in, uh, Doctors. I suppose is that the same incarnation? It'll be two incarnations, but the same body and so forth. Uh, it's, so, it's so complicated. Stephen Moffat! <sighs> and Will from The Who Addicts kept saying Chris Chibnall was the one who kind of messed up all of the regeneration rules, but said that the whole... David Tennant regenerating into himself and John Hurt being included into the lineup. So there was 14, 15 Doctors by Before the Timeless Child Children was simple. Mm, not quite. I mean, yeah, Chris Chibnall did kind of mess up all of that, all the all the regeneration stuff. But um, yeah, um, I'm still not entirely happy about the whole David Tennant regenerating into himself thing being counted. I don't mind it being like the cliffhanger to Storm Earth Jenny's End, but that was a brilliant cliffhanger. And if it was a like a fake out regeneration, if it didn't count like um Lie of the Land, for example, um or fake. Um and by the way, uh, Impossible Astronauts one is the Tesla Lexus, so that's a fake one. But yeah, it, I don't like the, it being counted. I've said it several times, I don't like it being counted. And had the fugitive doctor been between two and three and then this other regeneration was to make the Doctor think, oh, this counts, or the additional life was added on, and this was kind of found a way to make it 13 Doctors, even if it was 14 lives for the first set, um, up to Matt Smith, and then new set, sets of lives. I would actually have been happy about that. I would have thought Chris Chibnall would have fixed that, but no, he didn't do that, and then instead he kind of made it even worse, made the problem even worse. <sighs> oh, well. I, was, I guess we'll just have... I guess... Russell or a future showrunner will just have to either play with what they got or ignore it and just hopefully not to mess it up even any more after the 14th Doctor's time has passed and once we've gone to shoot his 15th. Okay, after that, hopefully it won't be messed up anymore. So anyway, that's it from my um, reaction to the comic relief um, sketches from this year's comic relief. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, sorry if I rambled a bit too much on some of that. But anyway, thank you. And like I said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my video about Doomsday and the upcoming announced uh, or announced upcoming Doctor Who spin-offs that are currently unnamed, but one of them's about Doctor Who villains and monsters, and one of them's gonna be about Unit. Probably just gonna be called Unit, but you know, it might get another it might get a catchier title or 
a, di a title to difference it from the big finish units for stories from 2004 to 5 and the, the unit new series ones from 2015 um but yeah anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys next time goodbye oh and before i go um cake designs so um i think i think you can see it i can't i can't really tell but if you're watching that i think that's that should be the spectre cake i can't really tell at this moment that's for my 17th and that was after spectre came out the year before in 2015 2015 so i would have been 16 so yeah that would have been my 17th in 2016 then 2018 2017 it was my 18th so it's the 18th age rating and then down here is the 2019 2018 one for my 19th which is the infinity gauntlet from avengers infinity war Okay, my numbers mix up because I'm I'm one year older than what these um, the years. So 2019 was my 20th. Um, this one was just a simple yellow 20 on a red background. It's not unlike the 18 that um, in yellow because I was inspired by the yellow numbers from the Thomas engines. So Thomas and Friends engines that have the yellow numbers. For example, the two from Edward and the zero from Douglas's 10. So that's how that one came about, but the red background just makes it look a bit nicer than a white background for the yellow numbers. 21 has the same for the numbers, but this time it has, it's in the London Underground Roundel and also the additional text of birthday. By the way, none of, most of these, um, the one, the when they became the cakes, uh, they were close to what I designed, but not entirely. If you've uh, seen my few, uh, Facebook and Twitters in the last couple of years, you probably have seen pictures of these. Um, so these were my 20th and 21st from 2019 and 2020. 2020, of course, being the year everything went to shit, but hey, a lovely cake, at least. Um, 2021 um, was the uh, cake, the tuxedo cake uh, for my 22nd, from, inspired by James Bond again. And funny enough, that was the year James Bond would return in No Time to Die. Yay. And then last year's cake for 2022, um, uh, see it down there, is the yellow Fiat 500 from Lupin III, the castle of Cagliostro, with the castle in the background, uh, in a design inspired from, a screenshot, from screenshots of that movie. And that was for last year's 23rd. And for this year, I'm planning on having a cake. Um, that looks like a clock. So another round one, bit of a clock, and some of the numbers around the side. So to make it look like a clock, to hence 24, as in 24 hours. So that's my plan for that. Anyway, so that's my um, cake design drawings for 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 20th, and 23rd birthdays shown, and a description for the 22nd one as well. If you want to see that, go and check out my Facebook and Twitter page, as well as how these cakes came out. Uh, these other ones based on the designs. Like, uh, I think my favourite one is probably the 21, how that came out in the actual cake. Whilst design-wise, I'm still impressed with how I did the Spectre one, and I believe the Infinity Gauntlet one is, well, is very colourful. Well, mostly colourful, at least. And I'm quite proud of myself on the Cagliostro one, the, the, the Fiat 500 one. Anyway, so... Um, anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.